In this video, we'll review Abbey Flexi Layout Studio, introducing the basic steps needed to create a simple Flexi Layout. Flexi Layout Studio offers virtually unlimited possibilities, including creating very complex and advanced layouts. For more details, please refer to the Abbey Flexi Capture Engine Quick Start Guide found within the Abbey Technology Portal. You'll also find information about our Auto Learning Technology Demo, another tool for creating simple document definitions using automatic classification and learning technology. This tool gives you an opportunity to capture a few fields from simple one-page documents. For more sophisticated scenarios, you'll need to use Flexi Layout Studio. On the bottom of the page, you'll find links to the Flexi Layout and Flexi Capture Basic Knowledge document. Check out these documents after you finish watching this video to learn more. For more in-depth understanding of our data capture technology, we recommend you attend our FlexiCapture online training. To enable a data capture program to extract data from a document, we must first let the program know where to look for the corresponding data fields. For example, we need to find the subtotal and total numbers on the receipt. We use this receipt as an example of a common document. In reality, FlexiCapture technology allows capturing multiple fields, tables, and repeatable groups from much more complex documents. And specifically for receipts, Abby created a special pre-trained technology, which is our Receipt Capture SDK. For this example, we apply the following logic. The fields in this document have the captions subtotal and total, and the data we are looking for is located to the right of its caption. In other words, we'll need to specify the type of data to find and their properties. We need to specify the search area where the data is most likely to be found. For example, the required data may be positioned to the right, to the left, beneath, or above some objects. Let's see what it looks like on this real example. At the beginning, as soon as we open Flexi Layout Studio, we need to create a new project. For demo purposes, we've already created one and you can see its properties, the path to the project and the path to the batch that will contain images to work with. As soon as we've created our project, we can add as many images as we need for our Flexi Layout development. We do this by navigating through Program Menu, File, and then Add Images. So, once the project is set up, we're ready to start development. Since the positioning of data on semi-structured and unstructured documents varies from one document to the next, we need to analyze as many images as possible in order to formulate the right search criteria. To get the best results, your test images should be representative of all the documents that are to be processed. This ensures all the possible alternatives are covered. Before we can start describing objects, we'll need to find out what types of objects the documents contain. To find this out, we'll need to pre-recognize these images. Let's add a few more images and pre-recognize them. As you can see, change do and total are examples of text blocks and words that were recognized. A flexi layout is a formalized configuration that enables a data capture application to locate data fields on documents, then extract information from those fields. In the graphical interface, a flexi layout is a tree-like structure with branches of blocks and elements. An element is an object on the image that has to be detected. The properties of the element describe the properties of the corresponding object. The element will tell the program what kind of object we're looking for, such as a picture, text fragment, or barcode, and then how large and where this object is most likely to be found on the document image. Now, let's see how elements work. For demo purposes, we've already created some elements. We'll analyze them first and then show how it works by adding a new one to our demo. We'll start with the keyword subtotal. Why start with subtotal as opposed to using total keyword first? If we look at the word total, we'll find a few elements on the receipt that contain the word total, such as subtotal, total, and total purchase. How do we explain to the program which one to choose? One way is to find a unique word, such as subtotal, and then tell the program that the word total will be the one that is located below the word subtotal. So, let's analyze the properties of each element. We'll start with the keyword subtotal. It's configured as static text with possible text variations like subtotal or susttotal. Let's move on to another element, the subtotal element, which will be a string we need to capture. So what do we know about this element? It will be a string and we know that it will be an amount of money represented as a decimal fraction. We can represent it as a regular expression. It'll be more than one number, then a dot separator followed by two more numbers. 
We also need to reserve at least four placeholders for this string, and in our case, it will not exceed eight characters. On the Relations tab, you can see it is related to the keyword subtotal and is located strictly on the right. It is located on the same line as the keyword subtotal, meaning we will limit the search area to below the keyword subtotal top line and then above the bottom line of the keyword. To make the search area slightly wider and more flexible, we'll add 10 points to the top and bottom of this area. We'll apply the same logic to the keyword total element, with one exception. On some images, there are two words containing total, which are total and total purchase. We need the keyword that is specifically located under the keyword subtotal and nearest to this keyword. That's why when we configure relations, when we say total will be below subtotal, we say it will be nearest to the keyword subtotal. Now let's create the element total as a string. Element total is a string type and we'll need to capture this string. And again, it will be an amount of money, so we can represent it as a regular expression, since it will be more than one number, a dot separator, and two more numbers. We need to reserve at least four placeholders for this string, and in our case, it will not be more than eight symbols. Similar to setting up the total field, we'll have to set a name for this field. It's related to the keyword total and is located strictly on the right. It's located on the same line as keyword total, meaning we can limit the search area to the intersection of the two areas below the keyword total top line and above the bottom line of the keyword. We'll also make the search area slightly wider, so let's add 10 points to the top and 10 points to the bottom of the area. Let's match this element and try to find it on the receipt. We located the element. It seems we have a problem. Our string was detected as four symbols, only not as a whole number. So we need to get back to the element's properties and find out where the problem is. Here's the problem. In our regular expression, we said it would be not more than one symbol before the separation, and it's exactly what the program found. Let's correct it and say that it will be more than one number before the dot separator. Let's check. Now it looks correct. Once an object has been described by means of an element, the element has to be tested, which we already did. As a result, the program identifies some specific element objects. These areas can be used to locate block regions. First, we described objects we need to find on the image and how we have to tell the program where to look for blocks from which data needs to be captured. Abbey Flexi Layout Studio allows you to create blocks for any type of content. It can be text strings, barcodes, pictures, tables, and others. Let's create a block from which we'll capture data. We'll need to create two text blocks. Each of them will correspond to the string element we created earlier. And we'll set up our string elements as corresponding source elements. So the first block will be subtotal and we'll have a source element of subtotal. Then we'll add another block named total having a total string source element. Let's switch to the block mode and test these blocks. As you can see, we finished the layout creation and all blocks were matched correctly. Each block stores information about the type of data within the corresponding region of the document and about the region itself. So now when we finished our Flexi layout creation, it can be exported into our data capture applications as a .afl file, which stores information about the elements, blocks, and their search conditions. In Abbey Flexi Capture, this Flexi layout is added to the document definition that is to be used to capture data from this type of document. To export a Flexi layout, first select the Export command from the File menu. Then, in the Export Flexi Layout dialog box, enter a name for the file and select the folder where it should be saved. The resulting file can be added to an Abbey Flexi Capture document definition or used in other data capture applications. We hope you enjoyed learning about the Flexi Layout Studio. For more information, please contact us today.